for the advantage. Funk with ease, as you please. Like a breeze, pay no fees. Rain or shine, save your time. It's so fine when you bank online. Finally, there's a savings account that meets your need for speed and ease. Satikor Bank E-Advantage. Bank online. No monthly fees. Unlimited, free Satikor Bank ABM withdrawals. Interest on your money. Satikor Bank E-Advantage. Yeah, it's so fine when you bank online. Open your Satikor Bank E-Advantage account today. I am pleased to be here today to share with you and take a look at the integral role you all play in the development of our country. SMEs are important driving forces for the country's economy as they provide goods and services and create employment opportunities for our nationals. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken us into uncharted waters and has greatly impacted the growth potential of numerous businesses, especially small businesses like yours. This reality is cause for concern for many and can be difficult to navigate alone. As we face this challenging period together, Sajikor Bank remains resolute in our mission to journey with our business partners and ensure that you are guided with the right solutions to satisfy your needs. This forum is aimed at assisting you navigate the changes brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic and ensuring that despite the difficult circumstances, you and your business will prosper. Sajikor Bank believes in empowering businesses, celebrating their highs, and supporting them through challenges. Our aim is to partner with business leaders and ensure that they receive top-notch financial solutions that will catapult their businesses to the next level along the journey. At Sajikor Bank, your vision is our mission, and we are determined to partner with you as you work to accomplish your dreams and become experts in your field. Sajikor Bank has been hashtag in your corner, supporting the growth of the SME sector and by extension, the economy. We truly appreciate your creativity, drive, and the great contribution you make to the country's development. Through our partnership with the Jamaica Business Development Corporation and the funding of businesses under the World Bank projects, Sajikor Bank has demonstrated our confidence in our locally operated businesses and we commit to continuing on that path as we have seen the difference we have been able to make. Today, our expert panelists will speak to the topic overcoming the anxieties of changes, the SME perspective, and share with you some tips on how best you can navigate this period of uncertainty to ensure that your businesses stand strong for years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the forum. I do hope you enjoy this afternoon's proceedings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shorvel Johnson, the Johnson Cunningham, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Shorvel Johnson Cunningham. She is the CEO of Sagicor Bank, and my name is Alicia White. I have the pleasure of being your host this afternoon, taking you through the discussion focused on overcoming the anxieties of change, the SME perspective. With us this afternoon, from right to left, are the Honorable Floyd Green, State Minister in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture, and Fisheries, and my favorite minister, I'm just gonna, I can keep talking about him until we get to see him on the camera. Our favorite, yes, there he is. Hey, Floyd, how are you? Good, good, good. Michael Willisey, VP Retail Banking, SME Business Banking, and Corporate Banking here at Sagicor Bank always ready to give advice, to, to me too, actually. Dr. Johan White, he is an occupational health consultant. That's a mouthful, but he's gonna help us get into the minds so that we can overcome these anxieties that we really do have. And joining us via Zoom is Ricardo Allen. He is the CEO and founder of One on One Educational Services Limited. And Ms. Val, Ms. Valerie, Vier hi Ricardo, how are you? And Valerie Vera, who is the CEO of J 
Hi, Ms. Val, who is the CEO of JBDC. We will also be taking questions at the end of the panel's presentations, panelists' presentations. If you have a question for a member of our panel, we ask that you raise your hand in the chat, at which time we'll unmute your microphone. Or if you prefer, state your questions using the hashtag AskSagicorBank. That's, I'll say that again. That's hashtag AskSagicorBank in the chat. And let's begin with Minister Floyd Green. Minister Green, again, is the state minister in the Ministry of Agri Industry, Commerce, Agriculture, and Fisheries. Do you ever get um, tired of saying that so many times? I mean, it's a, it's a mouthful, right? And, and also, I, and I've shared this with him, he's been doing a lot of work, um, several campaigns and so on, but I'm sure he's gonna tell us a little bit about that. Minister Green. Well, thank you, thank you. Um, first, I, I'd like to thank Sajikor Bank for bringing us all here together um, to speak to our S SMEs, um, speak about some of the challenges and uh, some of the opportunities. I think um, with any crisis, there are challenges, but there are also opportunities, and I'm happy that I have the ability to share. So I really want to start by just thanking our frontline workers, our healthcare professionals. It has been a challenging time, but overall, I think we have done amazingly well as a country. We have about 590 um, positive COVID cases now. Unfortunately, we've had nine deaths, but 60% 60, 60 of those who are positive have recovered. And I think that is good news. So as we look to the phase reopening of the economy, I think our MSMEs are really looking to see how they can get back on top of things and part of what we want to do as a government is to ensure that we hold their hands and help get them through that process. Um, everybody will have to now prioritize health and wellness. I think it's critical that whatever business you run, um, your own personal health and uh, those of your employees is, is your first priority. But I think people also now recognize the importance of things like business continuity plans. Um, you have to look at your business practices, your contingencies. All of those things are critical in this time. Importantly, as a government, we recognize that no sector was spared. And we tried our best to help our businesses navigate this time by offering some cash assistance and various stimulus packages to help you through this difficult time. Our care program, which was really expansive, offered a $100,000 one-off grant to MSMEs. In fact, we've had 1,200 MSMEs who have applied for that care program grant and who have been verified. We've already paid over, assisted some 381 MSMEs and are looking to process the additional 700 over the next uh, two, two or so weeks. That's part of our overall stimulus, our overall stimulus package that was outlined in the budget. You know, we have really been focusing on driving our MSME sector. We believe that if the economy is going to grow, then our MSMEs have to do well. And that's why we've had a series of actions. We removed the minimum business tax of $60,000 that MSMEs used to pay upon registering, used to pay yearly. We thought that was a bad idea. And we increase the GCT threshold. So if you're a small company, unless you make over $10 million, then you don't have to pay GCT. So those are some of the moves we've made in, in, in the recent past to ensure that our MSMEs have a, a more level playing field to do well. And we also, in our budget, if it missed you, we, as a part of our 2021 2020-2021 budget, we put in a tax credit. So all our MSMEs, once you file your tax return, you actually get back $375,000, right? Again, this is a part of our overall drive to help our MSMEs do well, but importantly, I think it could not come at a better time now that you're faced with the reality of COVID. There are some initiatives that we'll be embarking on during the course of this year, and I'm sure during the course of our discussion, we can speak more about them. I'll just flag some of them. So for those of you who are in the small business sector, you're looking on, you're wondering where can you turn to for some assistance. Um, let me just give you some of the things that we're working on now. We have a new project with the IDB. Again, could not have come at a much better time. One of the things that we've been looking at our ministry to see what are some of the gaps that we have in our SME sector especially in our MSME sector, from our micro-businesses. What are some of the challenges that they face? Oftentimes, they'll tell you they, have, um, they need more technical support, they need more financing, um, they need startup capital. 
And for a long time, we've been trying to grapple with how can we provide those resources. Well, fortunately, the Ministry of Finance signed a new deal with the IDB last year, um, came into fruition this year. It's a program called, well, we call it Biggie. And I, I want to get the exact acronym. It stands for Boosting Innovation Growth Entrepreneurship Ecosystems. What does that mean? It's a 50, 000, 50 million US dollar loan that the government has taken that will go over the course of five years and it's really going to build our SME ecosystem. So everything, all of the funds will be put into grant programs and it starts from developing a venture capital scheme so that you can get early stage capital. It also means if you are already established and you're looking to move from one level to the next, we will provide some capital support for that. It means helping our incubators and our accelerators to work with our businesses to provide that technical support. We're going to put some capital towards that. So if you want more information, you can go on the DBJ's website. It's dbankjm.com. You can just Click on the tab that says Biggie, and it will walk you through some of the things that are going to be on offer. We actually had our first meeting yesterday of this new um, Biggie project, and we're going to be unveiling the new grants in another three months, so you can really look, look forward to that. Again, if you were to ask me what are some of the things that you're, you should be looking to do now, is to digitize whatever you do. So we're going to be helping you. You can approach us at MICAF. We have a new program coming through our MSME unit. So that's the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture, and Fisheries, our MSME unit. We'll be looking to work with 75 small companies to help them with digitization. We recognize not only for COVID, but for the new economy, you have to digitize what you offered. And the companies that have done well, that have survived this time, they have innovated and they have ensured that technology is at the forefront we know at times it's challenging, you don't have the money, so please approach us at the ministry, we can help you with that. The DBJ also has some digitization vouchers, you can get up to $200,000 to help you digitize your company. So, final, final thing, and then we can go into questions and we can talk more later. Again, all of the benefits that we've been offering will only come to you if you are a registered small business. So I can't overemphasize that you have to formalize yourself. Now is a great time to get formal. Now is a great time to approach the ministry, approach the JBDC, allow us to help. We will be holding the hands of our MSMEs. We'll be working with our financial partners like Sajikor Bank to ensure that not only do you survive this COVID time, but you do well, that you grow and that you prosper. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister Green, for a very robust presentation. Lots of information in there that we'll get into a little bit more a little bit later because I know that some persons may have some questions uh, based on what you have. You, you broke a little bit of news, too. I like it. All right. So we now turn our attention to Mike Willisey, VP Retail Banking, SME Business Banking, and Corporate Banking. Uh, Mike, how are you? Hi, you good? I'm very good. Good. So I'm going to ask you to talk to us about how Sajikor Bank will be supporting our SMEs during this time beyond pivoting after panic. Well, good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Sajikor Bank, well, one way we are supporting small businesses is it's very obvious. We, we have had, we're having this conference just as we speak. Uh, we thought that this is unusual time. Uh, there's a lot of anxieties. Uh, this is really what I call strange, a strange environment. And the thing about COVID is that it does not discriminate whether you're rich, you're poor, um, you're, if there's any sort of color, it doesn't really matter. And we are all faced with what I call that uncertainty, that uncertain environment. However, um, as I said to someone recently, what makes us human is our ability to overcome um, what I call a hardship. And this has been happening from time immemorial. But the question is now, how do we treat with this new environment and, and certainly survive? And I, I heard the minister speaking, and um, when I look across the world, Jamaica has done significantly well in managing this particular pandemic. Now at Sajikor Bank, what have we done so far? Uh, 
once you're a small business owner and you bank with us, the first thing that we thought of, well, not even, it was automatic. It was almost like a reflex action. Um, there was a number of requests to sort of suspend um, principal and interest payments. And um, we went through it painstakingly, but we have done that. Um, we have given significant um, deferment of interest and principal, allow small business people to concentrate on other things other than trying to make payments during this uncertain time. Um, many of those will come to end within three months to six months. At that time, we will discuss again what next to be done. But for me, one of the most impressive things that I've seen the, the manager have done, um, the president, you would have seen her, Shawville Johnson. Certainly, we are a business as well, but a larger business. And we have to start looking at what expense will we cut in order for us to manage our cash flows. And early in the year, we would have announced that we are building a, a center, a center to build capacity within the small business sector. And uh, we didn't even look at that uh, in terms of cutting expense. We went straight ahead into that. We continued because we know that beyond COVID, there is going to be a need for the small business sector. Um, I was quite, you know, sometimes in what I call adversities, it lets you stop and think. And when I looked, you'll hear from the small business manager, which is Howard Smith, very great uh, manager. And when I looked at the extent of the number of small businesses that he banked, I was myself quite impressed and the level of, and the different disciplines that you cover. And not for the first time, but sometimes it stops. You start to stop your breath. And I say, my God, you know, this country is built on the backbones of um, small businesses, um, the number of lives that you have touched. And at Sagicor, we intend and we intend to continue to stay on track in supporting you. Um, what I've also realized is that there is a, what I call financial fragility in this sector. And I can understand sometimes you're bootstrapping, but it goes home to show me that planning is one of the best things that you can ever do in your small business. And I bring to your attention, I was speaking to a, a young lady last night. She runs a small business and she went very far. She even put in a, some sort of corporate governance. She has a board. And she was able to tell me that because of the plans and the guidance of the board, she's able to um, pay and keep her team members together. But one of the things that she said to me um, is that right now what COVID has done for her is that it has brought back that fire of, of, of innovation because she's now looking to see what are the opportunities that we can now, she can get into. And she has actually sort of transformed her business. Um, the minister spoke about digitization and she is now doing a lot of online programming. We are going to talk a lot more because there's many more things that we have to say during this particular conversation. But one of the things that I ask you to do, if this is the last thing I say before I go, and I said it to her last night, is that entrepreneurs are different. They're special people. And I've seen a lot of academic work done on to try and describe the characteristic of an entrepreneur. And one of the things that came up is that you don't know danger. You don't know because if you do know danger and you're risk averse, you will not create. And I'm saying that for this country to move ahead and this country to continue to build value, value for our future is going to be built on small businesses. And what that is going to take is your creativity. Um, I know sometimes you come to the bank and we coach you or guide you. Um, and sometimes we may not see things the way you do. But one of the things I'm asking you never to do is to lose that burning fire in the stomach of defying risk. Because this country and the world depend on that particular characteristic. And um, that is my biggest tip of today continue to be an entrepreneur and that continuation is being fearless, defy risk and take as much chances as you can. 
which is more or less calculated. You'll hear much more from me as soon as you pose more questions. Mm. Thank you so much, Mike. This shows we're certainly in our SME's corner. It's something that we say all the time, but we remind you, write your pressing questions. Both uh, Minister Green and Mike Willisie have both, they've both said that they're willing to answer all of your questions. And that's what this is about. We may think that we know everything that you want to ask, but only you can share with us. Up next is Mrs. Valerie Vieira, CEO of JBDC, or partner JBDC, who supports the operators of MSMEs and knows firsthand that our business climate is never static and thus would be armed with strategies to help MSMEs during this time. She's here, so to speak, joining us via Zoom. Hi, Ms. Valerie, how are you? I am well, and I might not be physically there, but you know, my personality is right there with you. Yeah, no, no, no. We are, I, I'm, you are absolutely <laughs> correct with that. Energy, 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 yeah. right here in this room. So tell uh, us what the JBD is. So thinks. exciting. Tell First us. Of all, I'm so excited <laughs> that um, we're focusing on the sector, which means the most to me. My confession, and you have my best minister with you as well. So <laughs> that's also my next public statement. Yes, so we're, we're, to we're aligned on that. We're sharing, we're sharing. Okay. But I want to congratulate the Sajikor team on this initiative because we have worked together because we have a common view as to what needs to be done for this very, very important sector, as Michael pointed out a while ago. It's the backbone of the country. And if your spine isn't working, then you will have a problem, right? You tend to fall over. So I'm very excited that we can work together. And in fact, I want to say team, because if Team Jamaica don't work together, we're not going to get very far in the recovery process. So I'm excited about it. Now, from the information that we have from all over, but including the research that JBDC conducted during our current situation, it is obvious to us that, as Minister said, all sectors right across the board, all industries have been impacted. And our micro sector, my MSMEs, of course, they are representing all sectors. And they have all been, um, you know, challenged as to how they can move forward. And while we, and I'm sure later on, Johan will speak to it. While we could see the economic challenges, what we don't often look beyond that to see is the psychological strain that has come upon the, the, um, the business folks. And I want to tell you that what has come forward is that people who, and too much of a, a percentage actually, who have been doing a thing, instead of operating structured businesses, they really come into the reality. Because as Minister says, said, all the support that is offered from government and from other sources, they ask for documentation. And this is painfully obvious that our sector needs to relook at what they do and how they do because doing a thing is gonna keep some of them out of these immediate kind of support programs. So we at JBDC, we know that we have to put some serious um, work to see how we can help our client group to really come on board and really get themselves properly structured and have themselves formalized so that they can really plug into the benefits that Asagi Corps, that the government, that all the other sources are offering and which now they are locked out of. We have also found that, and by the way, JBDC has not been closed. We have just used technology to keep ourselves in contact with our clients during this period. But we have also found that people are realizing that the business model that some have been operating is not going to work in the future. They have to wheel and come again. They have to re-engineer their approach because they have not built in 
for occurrences such as COVID-19. It might not be the virus, it might be the hurricane, it might be many other things. And what we want to emphasize in the new period going forward is the fact that we have to look at how we mitigate these risky situations that will come in some form. And that the businesses, the entrepreneurs need to visit their business models to see exactly how prepared they are for any incidents that will, they will come in different forms, but they need to look at that because that is what has happened that people have just been going along and think everything is okay. And then boom, March came and the virus came along with it. Again, we have to look at how we operate to understand and we have preached it, you know, but some people I think, think that, I mean, it will come eventually, but funds that come into the business is not funds for you personally, it's funds for the business. So we're going to have to look at how we manage our, our revenues, when it comes in, it's not for personal, it is for the business. And we have to organize to know what share goes to you and what stays in the business to keep the business sustainably operating. So sustainability have to be a big, big banner across all the business models and how we review what we do. And because we have fallen short on some of those, we have found that there's a lot of anxiety, frustration, and fear among the group. And so JBDC, you know, our logo and our motto is, how can we help you? We have to really vibe that up. And I must congratulate my team, you know, I have the best team. Sorry, Sachikor, <laughs> we have the best team. But they are, they have been on board and they have been working continuously with our client group. In fact, I want to say that since March, we have done 30 webinars, having recognized the gaps that need to be filled if we're going to truly recover. So we have been doing Tuesdays, uh, Thursdays, Fridays, and we have really gotten excellent response. And what we're doing in those webinars is really to look at the gaps that have been identified and see how we can be in that recovery mode to get people ready now to plunge back into real business. And I know we only have a little time, so you know, I made sure and have my notes because when it's small business, I can talk forever. But we are trying, and I think we've seen some light that our clients need to rethink, re-engineer the, the brain to move from panic to back to passion. Because unless we do that, we're going to be always in the fear and frustration mode. And we want to move forward. So we're massaging the process to move from pan panic to passion. Because for us, the three Ps are important. Planning, perseverance, and passion. Those are always the ingredients that makes the business really vibes up. So we're pushing that to see how we can really get prepared and move from seeing dark tunnel, tunnel to opportunities. But what I want to say, because we're not only speaking to our client group, which we continue to speak to, I want to speak to the stakeholders who might be tuned in. We have to move from the Band-Aid patchwork network of Band-Aid programs for this sector to surgery. We need to move to surgery, as Minister said earlier. We need a backdrop, a roof with the hurricane straps on that can provide a strong support that can help the sector to move forward. We are JBDC. We want to see some of those programs, really surgery. So we come back with real programs that can help the sector to recover. And we have seen it, it's evidence. If all the components of the economy don't become part of that recovery program because the link is obvious. When the big guys go down, the little ones go down. When the little ones go down, the big ones going down. We're in it together. It's Jamaica, Team Jamaica to work together. And we need to really come together and recognize the real programs that are needed. Not Band-Aid, as I keep saying, surgery, so that the ecosystem become nourishing and that would provide that fertilizer to move the sector 
forward as the entire economy move forward each component needs to be stepping stepping together so recovery is jamaica in total or else it's not going to happen so jbdc stands ready we're working hard of it we haven't stopped we're open to work with all the stakeholders and really we want to see the sector move forward and it is possible we've seen some light but we want to see some more some more support in uh structured in a way that enhances the development and sustainability of the the clients or entrepreneurs in the micro small and medium size um sector the possibilities are great and we just need to get serious or more serious and work towards providing that fertilizer that recovery can truly and quickly come to the economy. And I must emphasize, if the MSMEs are not part of that process, I um, think we will have a problem. So we're open for business, continue to be open. We're working with our minister, working with Sajikor and other companies and other stakeholders to really move from panic to passion and really working on all levels. And one important thing, and I know we have a time constraint, we know that we work not only with the business because JBDC works with the whole person. We keep saying that. We're helping them organize at home because some of the issues start there and also with the business because they are twins. And if that is not, we have to train. So if that's not working, this is not gonna work. How we do we get that mindset right beyond? How we get the mindset working so everything comes together and we really move forward? Sustainable development is critical and we need to work on those three P's. JBDC is open, we're ready, and our clients, I know that they are ready for the support. So we are here and we're ready to make things work. And as we say all the time, you know, together we can do a lot of things. When we are not together, then we can do nothing. Thank you so, so we much, really Valerie. So really need that strong rule. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Valerie. We will move right into our next presentation, which will come from Dr. Johan White, occupational health consultant with a background in work wellness and handling operational stressors. And I, 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 I've never seen this level of stress, to be honest with you, among uh, business people, uh, parents, teachers, it's been quite a bit. So um, how do you cope? I mean, how do you, how do you overcome these anxieties? That's something I'm looking forward to talking about, but it's all about mindset. Mm -hmm. It's about mindset. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's a real honor to be able to share with you in this forum. Thank you, Sajgor, for having me. Today I will share with you two general approaches to coping with the challenges and uncertainties that come with this global public health emergency. I will remind us about certain attributes that contributed to our choosing this path of being business owners. One key quality being that we are naturally lifelong learners. Secondly, I will talk about taking care of ourselves through a positive mindset. As business operators, we're a unique set we're doing the work that we cannot not do. Pursuing ideas and dreams that make us jump out of bed in the morning, um, can't wait to start a new strategy. The ideas that we think about just before we fall asleep. We have recognized a problem and come up with solutions that we are working on bringing to scale or have brought to scale. And in that process, also trying to create wealth and security for ourselves. As business owners, we're no strangers to anxiety and uncertainty. Commercial rent, due every month. Salaries for your staff and for yourself. Ensuring that you have the resources and logistics in place to fulfill the needs of that dream client you'd been pursuing for months, sometimes even years. Pitching potential investors and commercial banks for that much needed cash infusion. And we're still in business. Maybe the same one that we'd started, maybe a new one, a new approach, a new idea. Maybe we're on that break, planning our next move. And then now comes this devastating um, disease sweeping across the globe that makes it look like the world is ending. 
and then the world also stops. Airports and cruise ship ports have to close. Customers face job loss and their movement is restricted. Sales drop, but the expenses continue. Businesses are forced to close their doors and adapt. We see lives being lost. Our friends, our families are affected, our communities. You know, we can relate to relatives who are living overseas, relatives who work on cruise ships. Sometimes our communities are affected, our homes, our workplace. So everybody feels it. And so as entrepreneurs, as business owners, this thing that we have about us as lifelong learners, we activate that and we start seeking out accurate information about how to protect ourselves. And you know the drill, the frequent hand washing, the physical distancing and so on. But there's a lot that we don't know and there's a lot that we still don't understand. But I want to emphasize something that's very important. Anxiety. Anxiety is normal. It's a natural defense mechanism that raises your awareness so that you can be on alert, right? Another important thing that I want us to appreciate is that, is that there are some things that are outside of our control. We didn't invent this disease. We can't necessarily control the rate of spread of this disease, except for certain measures. And then there are things that we do have that are still in our control. So things that we choose to do, choose to practice prevention measures like hand washing, choosing to exercise daily, um, choosing to check in with friends and family. So there are choices that are within your control and that you can do something about. Coming back to that central attribute responsible for that resilience that we know as business owners, as, li as lifelong learners. We're constantly acquiring new information about our field of work, about our industry, about growing a business, about managing a team, about sales, about marketing, about accounting. And this is a strength that we call upon, that we can call upon at this point. We're likely already doing it without even realizing. As thought leaders in our respective fields, we're also thinking not just at that micro level, but at a leadership level, at a macro level, at a global level. We're asking ourselves as business owners these questions. How will this experience change our industry? What does the future look like for my industry? And so with that lifelong learning attribute, we start exploring and reading, making calls to others. And of course, you use this information to make adjustments to your own business operation. But there's an opportunity here. You can also try to provide that information to others in your network, others in your ecosystem. So other business owners, other government agencies, other stakeholders who are involved in your industry by putting together a seminar using the information that you've been pursuing. So rather than just keeping it to yourself, you also create a forum um, in which you can share that information. And as sick of webinars as we've become, it actually presents an opportunity, right? You may not be perfect um, the first time you try to host a webinar using the information that you found. But with preparation and practice and taking feedback from your audience and addressing those concerns which they have expressed going forward, you get to build your relevance and you get to buttress your thought leadership and your brand. In doing this, for example, I've spoken at nonprofit organizations like Rotary Clubs, and during that, those interactions, I've made new connections. Um, been introduced to new business opportunities. I've been asked by private and public sector to share in those fora. And so in every crisis, there really do exist opportunities. No knowledge is wasted. You use what you learn, you train, and you teach someone. Now, I want to turn to taking care of ourselves. I'm going to talk about mindfulness. Now, Mindfulness means so many different things to different people. And of course, if you have so many different definitions, your reaction will be, well, everybody can't be right. Well, a mindful response to that might be that, well, maybe they're all correct. <laughs> mindfulness at an even higher level 
may be that, well, there's no rightness or wrongness, except if rightness means to you making someone else wrong. And if you're busy making someone else wrong, it means that you're protecting or defending something you think you already know or you already believe. And therefore, in that mindset, you're not open to learning new things. Mindfulness is a way of being. It's a positive way of being. Mindfulness is being present and appreciating the now, not missing out on what you have now because your mind is in the future, thinking about things that have not yet happened. And we don't just worry about the future. The mind acts in a way that has you worrying about the worst possible scenario, the worst possible outcomes, no matter how unlikely. Mindfulness is about appreciating the present and not living in the past, not being hung up on some mistake or past event that traps you with chains to that person that existed before. If you're living in the past, then you can't appreciate the opportunities that the current moment presents. What mindfulness is not, for sure, it's not something that becomes that you become at the, the snap of a finger. And it is something that is practiced. I was introduced to a book by a Nepalese um, Buddhist monk. And it's a book on meditation and mindfulness. I thought initially it was a complicated book. I wasn't ready to receive the material. I was reading it, it's written in English. It might as well have been written in Chinese. But I put it down for a few months and during that time, I was doing other things, attending seminars, reading books, watching documentaries. And I wasn't necessarily on a specific quest to prepare to understand this book about meditation. But what was happening was that I kept hearing more and more about the power of the mind and the power of our thoughts over our lives. The mind is like a little monkey, and this is how the monk puts it. It loves to play around, it loves mischief, and it loves to be busy just for the sake of being busy, unable to be still. Mindfulness and meditation are not about trying to change the monkey into a dove or a turtle, but it's about knowing that this is how the monkey behaves. The mind likes to be busy, it likes mischief and drama, its default position is to be negative. It makes up the worst case scenario out of every simple matter. The what if I fail. The busy mind that keeps on talking and talking and talking when you're trying to fall asleep. Thoughts that make us afraid to sit with ourselves, that make us fear silence and quietude. It's that negativity that leads to internalizing of other people's hate and negativity and turning that into self-hate. Not realizing that that prejudice is not about you. It's not about your self-worth, but it's about them. They're lacking something. They're lacking love. They're lacking empathy. They're lacking enlightenment. What you think about and focus on becomes your reality. The mind is constantly looking for material and evidence to support what it already assumes. So knowing that this is how the mind operates, I want to focus on two techniques. One of them is to feed your mind with positive material. Feed your mind with positive material. Do more of reading or listening to audiobooks, self-improvement and positive thinking material and less TV, right? More listening to uplifting music with positive and inspiring lyrics, and less unhealthy lyrics or negative lyrics. Checking in with friends whom you found to be positive thinkers and who usually have an encouraging word, and less gossiping. More positive affirmations, like saying out loud to yourself, instead of saying, I'm so tired, say, I'm resilient. I am strong. Instead of saying, I'm a failure, say, I'm a winner. And believe it. 
watch biographies and documentaries about people you look up to and that you would like to be like, and less television, less negative self-talk. Feed your mind positive things. Secondly, knowing that the mind is a mischief maker, a little monkey that likes mischief. One aspect of meditation that I've learned about is to stand outside of that and observe the little monkey and say, I see you, but not today. I see you, but not today. Alongside your newly developed sixth sense of mindfulness, some other good practices um, include some practical things that you can do now, especially if you're working from home, is to have a designated work area. That specific area is for work. What that does is that it's a space that inspires you to work even on those days that you're not in the mood to work, but you have to. It also separates your work from your relaxation and your living space. Working from home does not mean working 24 seven. Celebrate your successes. Unpack those certificates, medals, trophies, mount them on the walls. It's a reminder that you've overcome other challenges and you'll continue to do so. So in closing, the world is facing an immense challenge, but business owners are lifelong learners. We're resilient and we can find opportunities in this crisis. Taking care of companies, taking care of customers, taking care of staff means taking care of yourself first through a positive mindset. Thank you. Thank you so much. Listen, first of all, right? I could, uh, do they pra did they teach you that voice? <laughs> in, <laughs> in, <laughs> you just want, yes, yes, you just, yes. And, uh, yeah, very zen, <laughs> very zen. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. White. You really shared some um, real pearls of wisdom there. Uh, we're winding down nicely, so um, we'll get your, well, I know we have some questions already, but keep sending them through to us. We have recorded them and we will ask as much as we possibly can before we end. Uh, joining us this afternoon as well to share his perspective, he's also joining us via Zoom. Zoom, Mr. Ricardo Allen. He's the CEO and founder of One on One Educational Services. Hi, Ricardo. How are you? Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me, Alisa. He operates uh, one of the, in one of the sectors affected by COVID-19 or education sector. And Ricardo, thank you so much for speaking with us. Please share with us how you have been affected and what you've been doing to cope with the impact of COVID-19 on your business. Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, good afternoon to our viewers. Uh, Sajikor, congratulations on 50 years of business. Uh, it's truly amazing to have been around for that long, having gone through several changes. And so I must congratulate you. Uh, Minister Green, thanks for joining. You know, myself and Dr. White, uh, we're on the, the, the side of the fence uh, who are beneficiaries of uh, you know, things that Sajikor offers, such as um, all the nice little loans and those sort of things. JBDC, we've benefited from that as well as a small business. And so the, the perspective that I'll be sharing is from that angle, right? You're a small business. You're on this uh, webinar right now. Uh, I just kind of wanted to share some of the things that you can do, what we're doing uh, to stay ahead of, of this uh, COVID-19, which is absolutely uh, devastating. Now, you know, I, I want to start by sharing with you a story. I want to take you back five years ago. Five years ago, one-on-one -on -one at the time, uh, educational services would have been about two years old. And at the time, we provided uh, lessons for kids in the classroom. These were very small classes, maximum of 10. And students would come on a weekend and they would come and prepare for their CSEC and CAPE exams and they would do extremely well. We went from 20 students to 1,000 students in less than three years. And we made this, the, the decision back in 2016 to move entirely online. We literally uh, you know, 
closed down the class business. We sold it off to another company and we launched our online learning platform, some of which you're seeing behind me, allowing any student in the Caribbean to take their exams at their own pace online. Now, for the past four years since we've made that decision, it started out obviously a little rocky because at the start, it's always going to be difficult. But now, as a result of what we did four years ago, making the investments that we made four years ago, partnering with folks like Sajikor, DBJ, those sort of things, we have been placed in the position entrusted by the Ministry of Education in Jamaica to keep in excess of 100,000 students in school every day online, are coming online now and going to classes. The reason I share that story is that the journey of a thousand miles begin with that first step. And what we've been able to do as a company is to look ahead, step back, and focus on what I call your core. Now, what exactly is your core? Your core begins with your cash. That's your C. Cash is king in any business. If you're a small business owner on this call, I want you to look at your cash position right now. And I want you to think about the next month, the next three months, the next 12 months. And the aim of the game is to be alive, to take advantage of the opportunity, right? So you want to protect your cash in the best way possible. You're going to use your cash, but you want to use it to do things that will put you ahead of the game, right? Four years ago, one-on-one -on -one would have invested heavily in online education in excess of a million US. And now that technology now enables two countries, Bahamas, Jamaica, to be able to learn remotely and stay in school. Number one, your cash, protect it. Number two, you must focus on your operations. It's very important. Everything that is good or bad in a business comes back right down to its operations. You fix that, you have a business. The truth of the matter is, sometimes we believe that the best way to fix operation is to incorporate technology um, to do all of these high-tech sophisticated stuff. The truth of the matter is, technology is really a way of doing something, you know. So if you have a business and you look at its operation, you want to see where there are inefficiencies, you want to get rid of those. You want to see how best to do things better. Now is not the time to be thinking about holding on to those old ways. That's out the door. That's not going to exist a couple of months from now. COVID has forced us to almost rapidly or accelerate our efficiency and making our businesses more efficient. We want to focus on that operation. Cut your cost. Those sort of things. Look to that. Look to doing things better. If you're doing things by paper now and you can't get into the office, move online. That's one way to do it. Keep records. You're a small business. A lot of folks in Jamaica, as Mrs. Vera said, you know, would have, you know, been doing a hustle. I just hustling and not keeping any records. Well, no, you need a loan. <laughs> you need a loan now, but you need records to get that loan. So focus on your operation and fine tuning and closing some of those gaps. And then you want to go to your R. Remember, we're talking about core. You want to retool, you want to think about retooling, you want to rethink some of those stuff, and you, importantly, you need to be realistic. COVID, many people, depending on who you talk to, um, has a perspective as to when business is going to bounce back, right? Some folks you talk to tells you it's going to be two months. Some people you talk to tells you it's going to be next year. The reality is it's an uncertain time. It's an uncertain time. And if you are an individual right now who is feeling a little nervous, a little unease about uh, the uncertainness of the future, this is where you need to sit back and use the additional time. Because the truth of the matter is the world has practically slowed down. 24 hours has now been contracted almost into 8 to 10 hours because there are curfews on either side of that 8 hour period. Now you have the time to obviously, as Dr. White would have mentioned, spend time with your family, yes, and do some of those things you've always wanted to do. Me, I've taken up a few skills. I've learned a few things that, that are new. 
um, you know, just, just recently, uh, I started to farm in the back of my yard. But that's great. You now need to think about using that time to put your business in a position to be successful coming out of COVID so that you are ahead of the game. Again, one-on-one, -on -one, five years ago, was in the class. If we did not change that business model right now, we would be in a position where we have a class model and students will need to be learning online and now is when we would need to be figuring it out. Use the opportunity now to figure it out so that you can be ahead of the game in the future. And then your E, remember we're talking about the core. Your E, your employees. Your employees are your backbone of your operations, of your business, take care of them. You take care of your customers, your business will flourish. Now, obviously, many of us are strapped for cash. I am strapped for cash. You're strapped for cash. But what can we do in times like these to basically get the most out of our employees? And this boils down to looking at training. Training your employees to now add more value to your business. Because if you can get more output out of that employee, that's one way to grow your top line. You see, no matter how COVID affects your sales, you know, and, and, and no matter how much you cut your cost, if you don't have revenue, you don't have a business. You want to focus now on your employee to equip them in bringing more value into your organization. You want to focus on your employees to learn new skills and to, to ideate with you, to give you new ideas on how you can seize the various opportunities that has presented themselves in this COVID pandemic. COVID is very bad. Let's not, let's not mistake about that. It's very bad for everyone who is involved. However, there's an underlying opportunity for an entrepreneur who can sit down, focus on his core, his cash, his operation, being realistic, and his employees to take advantage of the various opportunities that exist. Because at the end of this pandemic, as we would have had in the past, you know, Spanish flu 1918, World War II, all the various things that have happened in the world. There are folks who are going to come out on top and there are folks who are going to be left behind. You want to do the right things right now so that you're there when it ends to benefit. Mental health is important. I like the fact that Dr. White touched on that. It's so important, especially for entrepreneurs. But training your employees, enabling them and equipping them to be able to add more value to your organization is paramount to your success. And I leave you with this. In anything that you do in business, being a small business, and even for one-on-one, -on -one, what we've been doing. When we started in March, we only had 20,000 students coming online to learn. In one month, We've had to move from 20,000 students to over 100,000 students in Jamaica and another 60,000 students in the Caribbean. And we were not prepared as we thought we, we were. So no matter what you do, you will never be as prepared as you really need to be. But this is what I want you to understand. The only thing that I want you to leave this with, if there's one thing, is that change is constant. It will always happen. Be agile, be nimble, stay on your feet, right? And always be in a position to strike because then and only then will you be able to survive such a pandemic. My fellow entrepreneurs, small businesses, this is a very tricky time for all of us. And I, and I, and I, and I speak directly to your heart right now when I say stick in there, focus on your core, get your friends, get your family who can assist you in doing some things better. Reach out to a business partner. Reach out to me. Reach out to, to um, JBDC. Reach out to Dr. White. Reach out to the networks and the connections that you find to do better. And, and then and only then will you be able to survive. So, you know, those are some initial thoughts. I invite some questions. Oh. <laughs> you know, Ricardo, you never a dull moment when you're in the room or even on Zoom. <laughs> We'll take questions in a short while. <laughs>
but thank you so much for sharing um so many pearls of wisdom that you dropped i mean several persons have have shared and it it has been very inspiring now uh, just a sec hold on D I, I i wanted to let persons know that this forum yes we're talking here today but this forum will be available later on because we are recording and we're going to be sharing it on some more of our platforms afterwards because we aren't those of us who have joined this webinar and those of us in the room aren't the only ones who need to hear this information right now now is the time um, we share and I, I get to ask those pressing questions that you had. I have a couple myself, um, but uh, I'll start with, uh, I believe I'm starting with Howard, right? I'm going to start with Howard. Howard has joined us. He is the manager of SME Business Banking. Howard, how are you? I'm good. 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 So I'm going to ask you to look to camera when you're answering the questions. But uh, the question for you, first of all, uh, what are some of the things Sajipur Bank is doing for or to support the SME clients who are ready to face dangers and survive crisis as COVID-19 right, so rears its head? So for our SME clients so far, Mike alluded to earlier that we are providing assistance for clients who have loan facilities and need that sort of break. Um, on the other end of it, we are also providing support for clients by having the conversations and reaching out to our partners for clients who need that sort of support outside of the financial aspect. So if it is that you have always had a business and you're looking to, to take it to a, a next level to expose the business to the world, then Sajikor e-commerce is a tool that provides you the opportunity to, to open up your business, to ensure that you're getting revenues from all um, you know, the spaces that are out there. Uh, it is a costly venture, which is why we also know we'll share that the Development Bank of Jamaica also has a, pro a voucher which provides up to two hundred thousand dollars for persons who wish to set up their website or to, to set up any sort of app to help their small business. Um, for persons who are having challenges and want to limit, of course, their interaction with cash, you also have the Sajik or My Cash, which provides the opportunity for persons to do transactions internationally without having the need to visit physical location and you know limit our exposure. Um, so those are some of the things that we are looking at so far. All right. Thank you so much, um, Howard. And, and it has been a, a pretty tough period for a lot of your our clients. Can you share what the most pressing needs or issues are that are coming to your door? All right. So far, I mean, the impact has been um, across the entire island, um, across all sectors. We know predominantly any you know business relating to tourism and the restaurant business, those are heavily hit. And uh, of course, persons are coming to us if you have you know, loan facilities to have a conversation with our branch managers or business bankers to see how best it is that we can either restructure or assist with some sort of um, waiver. For persons, there are other persons who really are just looking for some sort of guidance as to how it is that they can navigate this challenging period. And that's what we really are doing because this pandemic is asking us to, to you know, rethink and re-engineer what exactly we're doing as a business. And for us to be able to be a financial partner for our SME clients, that is what is important right now, to see how we can walk through them, you know, walk with them to ensure that they are navigating towards this the difficult period. And I think that's the number one ask right now. Um, the uncertainty of the, the, the virus is, you know, it's impacting business when it will end, that sort of thing. So really it's for us to be there with them to, to you know, share ideas, share tips, to see how busy it is that we can walk with them and help them. All right. Thank you so much, Howard. This question is for Valerie. I hope we still have her. Are grants from the DBJ available to train staff as it relates to functioning in this new normal? Valerie? Um, there are a number of grant programs, yes, through the DBJ. Um, the voucher is a grant program, which we are the technical support, one of the main technical support um, for DBJ on that. But there are a number of grant programs that you could uh, you could call us, 928-5161, or visit the DBJ site website. But we have the information here, so if you call into us, 9285161, we will provide you the information. The reason why I'm not giving you specific grant programs is because we want to make sure that you're applying for the product you need. I keep saying to people, if you are giving out cake and you're diabetic, it might not be the thing you should grab for. 
So we would want to discuss it with you and guide you as to where and which one you should be trying to pursue. So call us and we will provide that kind of support to you and help you prepare to, to apply for the grant. All right, thank you, Valerie. Uh, Mike, I'm going to ask you to weigh in on this DBJ question as well because we have a partnership with them, we being Sagicor Bank, correct? Yes. Um, over the years, um, we have actually uh, worked very closely with, with, with um, the DBJ, and uh, in particularly, I want to call his name now, Milverton Reynolds and, um, and, and, and Edison Galbraith. They have been tremendous support. Um, one thing that I, I must say is that, and, and I hope I don't get them into trouble, is that the issue of flexibility, not everything fits into what I call a box. So I want the listeners to know that come to Sagicor with whatever is on your mind. Um, and in the past, we have been able to work with the DBJ to sort of customize um, a product or some sort of assistant that fits that particular situation. So um, we're open at Sagicor, and so I don't want you to look at the product brochure and say um, it can't fit. Uh, one thing that COVID has brought is what you call uncertainty, and if there's any more a, a better time, there's the flexibility of bankers. Uh, we're going to have to create on the run and if we can't do that as bankers without exposing the bank to any undue risk, um, Minister, we're going to still going to be in trouble. We have to become flexible in order to help this sector and any other business going forward. So I uh, leave to say that we work closely and we can customize as well. Thank you, Mike. So we have another question from, again, from one of our online viewers. Uh, this is from Keron. This is for you, Minister Green. One of the initiatives mentioned by yourself is no GCT for SMEs who earn less than $10 million. I, I believe that's per year. Is this revenue or profit is the question? Revenue. Okay. Yeah, uh, so. Turn on your mic for me. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, it, so it's revenue. Um, what we did, we increased the GCT threshold, um, so you won't have to file GCT returns once your revenue is below $10 million. Um, again, we saw it as a way to ensure that you, you know, you were putting the resources, especially the time and the energy, back into the business instead of having to, to, to treat with giving the government revenue. We believe if you're able to grow your business, if you're able to strengthen your business, then it works out better for both of us. It works out better for the government, works out better for the small business owner. So that is revenue. And then remember, when you file your tax returns this year, you can get back $375,000 as a tax credit. So again, formal filing returns. It used to be that people were very afraid of coming into the formal system because they believed that um, the government was trying to lure them in as a way to tax them, right? Um, we're, we're trying to dispel that notion. We want in the formal system so that we can adequately plan for you. We want in the formal system so that we know you're out there. Um, and that we can justify the sort of resources that the government puts towards the MSME. So if you're not there, then you won't be counted. So that's why we're saying to you, if you're in the formal system now, listen, you file the returns, it's below $10 million, no GCT. You don't have to file any returns. But more than that, you get a tax credit. So um, ensure you're in the formal system, ensure you follow the rules and there are benefits to accrue. Yeah, I, 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 I noted that both yourself and... Um Valerie Vieira said that documentation is going to be critical going forward. And I think that that's something that we need to make sure that we drive home. Uh, Ms. Val says we can't continue to do a thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it's, and a, it's a Jamaican thing. No, and, and, and the reality, uh, again, you know, sometimes we speak about small, sometimes when we say MSME sector, and, and, and sometimes we miss that we're, we're speaking about all businesses. We're speaking about the barber. We're speaking about um, the, the shrimp vendor, right? Register, approach it as a business. Um, one of the things that you saw from the CARE program is as we looked at what was happening across the economy, we had to constantly revamp and expand the, the, the 
businesses that we were helping. So at first, we never had barbers. We never had hair salons. But then we said, listen, when we see the downturn, social distancing rules, people don't want to go to their hairdresser, to their barber. They are businesses. They are legitimate businesses. So once they were registered, they were able to get a $40,000 grant. Things of that nature. So please register. It makes a difference. It does. And, uh, and uh, one of the things also that Valerie said, it may not be COVID, but it could be something else. Yeah. And we, we do have to be mindful of that. For Minister Green again from Cheryl. What are some of the specific programs that the government has put in place and what are the tangible quantitative measures to show that these programs have impacted the SME sector? You did answer the first part of that question quite extensively. Mm -hmm. So I really would love to know what are the measures that you're the, the measurement measures. Yeah. So 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 one of the things and and uh, thanks thanks for a good question. Clearly, part of what we do, we, we do have an MSME policy, an MSME an entrepreneurship policy that guides our actions in relation to um, our MSME sector. It was updated in 2018. You can check it on our website and you can see the vision and um, the things that we're planning to do. So, for example, the removal of the minimum business tax was a direct response to our MSME policy. We decided that one of the outcomes is to reduce the barriers for people to get into business. How do we measure if it has helped? Well, we've seen almost 40% jump in the registration of companies. We believe that's directly related to removing that barrier. So we do measure everything we do. So we do measure every initiative we take. Right now, one of the big things that we're working on, um, I never th talked about before, is we passed um, some procurement guidelines last year, some amendments to procurement guidelines that set aside 20% of government procurement for MSMEs. In other words, the government is one of the biggest spenders in our economy. We recognize, again, as a part of our policy, if we want to drive small businesses, then some of that money that government spends, whether they're procuring food, their procuring furniture should be for MSMEs. Our procurement guidelines used to be that the cheapest person must get the work, right? Yes, we're spending taxpayer money, but does that really help us if the cheapest person will always be the biggest company because of economies of scale? What if the small companies get the work so that they can grow? That is what we're doing. So we have, we've put aside 20% of our government procurement for MSMEs. Our ministry, MICOF, is now building out that framework. And come September, we're going to be starting with our ministry, the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture, and Fisheries, and the Ministry of Education, starting with that 20% set aside. So MSMEs, get ready for all the services that we offer that we go to procure. There will be some money that only you can access. And again, you wonder what is an MSME? Look online, look to our policy. We have definition for micro, small, medium enterprises. Is, uh, this, this is a question from me. Mm -hmm. um, the, the digitizing, so to speak, of that you speak of, you say that the, the or uh, MSME, MSMEs and or SMEs need to digitize. Mm -hmm. And is that something that the government will be doing as well? so that we all can move forward yeah. with this digitizing together. No, no, absolutely. So the, the government is on a big push to digitize. Um, and, and as you see, a lot of the things that I speak about, I try to encourage you to go to our website, to go to our digital platforms where you can find the information. You know, we have been doing that right across our agencies. We have, if you don't have it, and this is a shameless plug, we have a Consumer Affairs Commission app that everybody should have. If you don't have it, go in the Google Play Store and download it because you can report breaches of your consumer rights and also you can see the prices of goods in your supermarket. Are you shopping at the cheapest supermarket? Do you know? Are you shopping at the cheapest petrol station? Is one closer and cheaper? All of that through the Consumer Affairs Commission app. Yes, download it. But the big answer is <laughs> you can get... We're moving to ensure that we digitize all our information. We launched last year a trade information portal. It's called JTIP. You can type in JTIP in the Google Jamaica Trade Information Portal. What is that for? If you're wondering how to import or how to export, all the information is there. All the steps is there. You can type in what product you want to import, tell you how much duty you're going to have to pay, what the steps you want to export. You're a small business, you want to know how to get this out of the country. Will you need a permit? The Jamaica Trade Information Portal. Launched that last year, it's online. So we're digitizing, but we want you to digitize. So again, we have a new project coming on stream through our MSME unit. You can get some resources towards that. DBJ has a voucher. You can get some resources towards that. The companies that have done well, like one-on-one -on -one and Ricardo, you've done really well. 
You've moved from 20,000 people to, how much is that now? I was trying to do the math. Well, 180,000. Um, yeah, yeah. if you say a little letter for support, you understand why. Right? No, but, but the companies who have done really well are the ones who were able to offer their services without people having to come to them. Right? So those who have digitized, and what we saw in the agricultural space is a lot of companies now offer like fresh food delivery to your home and you just go online and you just type in what you want and they bring it directly to you. So take the opportunity to digitize now. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, sh the shameless plug was so necessary, by the way. Yeah. Uh, to Mike, does the bank have a special post-COVID facility to provide cash flow for MSMEs or SMEs, or SMEs, I, sh I should say, as they rebuild their business? Well, certainly. Um, we invite you to come down, um, just like how Ms. Val says, um, she talked about that cake and the, the diabetic. It's the same thing at Sagi Core. Um, we have to look at each business. Each business has its own characteristics. Um, we want to see exactly what you're doing. We have a panel of experts inside the bank. Um, Howard will tell you that. One thing that I forgot to tell you is that I don't believe that bankers should be banking small business and don't know anything about small business. So one of the first things that Howard did when he had his team was to send all of them to JBDC for training. So you have some qualified people, not only commercial bankers, but people who kind of more or less understand small business. So we welcome you to come down. Um, let us help you with your rebuilding process. But we want to understand your business model. So Sajiko, the doors are open. All right, thank you so much, Mike. So we had another question. Um, Howard, I'm gonna pose this one to you. Sajikor Bank, uh, this is from Hugh. Uh, Sajikor Bank needs to be more agile in responding. Most times an opportunity will not last through the long process that it takes for a loan to be approved. Um, there's more to the question, but can we get more agile, Howard? Uh, thanks for that question. Good point. And of course, Sajikor Bank is working on how it is that we can, you know, provide the solutions and the responses to these requests in a much shorter time. We are definitely working internally in, you know, ensuring that what we have, you know, what we're asking our clients for, it in, it's easy, it's simple, and we can provide a, a response quick and so that they will be able to use the funds in their business um, in the shortest possible time. So, yes, we are working on it. We, we do have um, the different products that we would have created that would be able to provide a quick response. Um, and uh, it is something that we are con constantly working towards, yes. Uh, and I know that some of, the, some of the reasons for our longer processes are some things that I've heard the government speaking about lessening as well. So we're looking forward to that. That's a shameless plug, <laughs> Minister Green. Well, we've listened. So. Yeah, yeah, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> All right, so I have a question for you, Dr. White. I mean, I, I think we've, we've, we've exhausted the questions that are online. If you have some more, feel free to send it through. Um, what's wrong with going to worst case scenario? I mean, you said don't go to worst case scenario, but what's wrong with that? It, I feel like it would help me to prepare, but then I'm a chronic warrior, so maybe you can use your voice and that's an <laughs> help that's an, me. That's a good question. Um, Usually, worst case scenario is unlikely, right? And you, if you're focused on that, then you can't prepare for what is more likely, so the opportunities that are more likely. Um, additionally, if you are a chronic warrior, uh, warrior, not warrior, warrior, <laughs> um, it, it can get to a state where it affects your function. And you know, anxiety, even though I said that it is normal, if you're finding that you are now having problems sleeping on a regular basis, um, you're unable to get anything done in terms of work, um, you're having um, conflicts. So interpersonal relationships are going down and that's an impact on your function. And in that case, it's advisable to seek advice from a health professional. It may be first your family physician, or it could be a clinical psychologist who often work together. Um, one common question that, that reminds me of um, is that sometimes we have these physical symptoms. Our heart is racing, um, you are lightheaded, and people asking, you know, am I normal? What's happening with this anxiety? If it's short-lived, it's fine. 
It happens to me, it happens to everybody. If this becomes chronic and it's lasting for more than a few seconds or lasting more than a minute and it's happening very frequently, then that's something that you want to look into. But um, to summarize my answer, the extreme is usually unlikely and it distracts you from preparing for the opportunities that are more likely and the situations that are more likely. Okay, I will after 2020 and after COVID-19, I will definitely take that under advisement because <laughs> I'm telling you, no, there's no one who, not even I could have predicted this worst case scenario um, where the entire world just stopped raps. <laughs> just so. I, I could not have pictured it, but you are, when you say it like that, it, it certainly sounds plausible. Very, it's, my worst case is very unlikely. Um, and then for Mike, you mentioned the Center for Small Businesses that we're setting up. And I, I wanted to know if you could just elaborate a little bit more on that, because I know that persons are wondering, what? What are you doing? What? <laughs> All right. So what we recognize at um, Sajikor Bank uh, is that there was a lot of focus on actually getting funding to small businesses and and that is quite commendable but we looked a little deeper and we saw where we needed to help to build the capacity of the entrepreneurs how do you really run business um, i think miss val spoke about that the the, the the cash flow is not your personal cash flow it's really the business cash flow and how do you separate that how do you read a financial statement to kind of actually tell you what is happening in the business how do you go about registering the business? How do you get all the information that we have provided today through the ministry and all of that? We knew that there need to be a bank that sort of bring all of that integrated. And so we decided, what are we going to do? How do we help more than just being um, what I call money changers, more or less? So what we did is that we looked at our halfway tree branch, very large branch in the middle of halfway tree before the, the, the transport center. And we decided that we're going to dedicate um, half of that branch to solely small business. And we said, we understand commercial banking, so we need someone who also understands training. So for the first time ever in Jamaica, Sajikor Bank is the first bank that will be having some alliance with, not a some alliance, we're going to have an alliance with the Jamaica Business Development Corporation under the same roof where we will twin and where we find clients coming in that need that, that capacity building, we push them over to Ms. Val, and Ms. Val people take care of them, push them back over to us. So we are going to be working together to build the capacity of that small business. And then the dream after that is, I have a, a friend who says, why is it that more of our small business cannot become um, what I call international brand. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that it's a drive, it's a dream from Sajikor that we want to see more international businesses coming from Jamaica. We want more Grace Kennedys. We want more Sajikor. And I think if we continue to organize ourselves the way we are, get that surgery that Ms. Val spoke about, right? The business center that we're doing and building together I think we not think, I know we can do it. And um, my greatest wish is to live to see it happen. And I think there are great things that are going to happen beyond COVID. I see a world that is so hungry right now to get back to whatever the norm is, whether it's a new norm, but we need to get out there. So prepare yourself, business people, this will pass, and you must be ready. Sajikor Bank, with that center, is helping to make you ready. And that's why we are making that particular sacrifice, because we think it is important for this country's growth. Thank you so much. Uh, another question, um, Howard or Mike, or as a matter of fact, any of you should answer this question if you feel like uh, getting credit as a small business is sometimes a challenge again this is from Karan 
what is Sagicor doing to help small businesses in getting credit from larger companies for their supplies, if anything? All right, so we, we do know and we are aware of the challenges that are out there. Um, there are businesses that would come to us, you know, for certain funding and don't necessarily have the collateral available, you know, the typical property investment, um, car, that sort of thing, which is why we, we have to look at each business, you know, in its own unique sense. And where possible Development Bank of Jamaica actually has a credit enhancement facility that allows us to tap into to provide funding for these businesses. So we are improving on that. Um, it is still a work in progress, but we are willing to look at each business that comes to us um, for funding to, to be able to try and address um, that need. All right. And also I have a question for Dr. White. Uh, what advice would you have for assisting your your staff or your team uh, based on what is currently happening? If you're an, if you're a small business owner and your your staff is having some challenges, what what advice would you give to that yes, business owner? That is a great question. Um, we're humans and we have needs. We have needs that are it's a hunger for interaction with other human beings, right? And it's important to check in. Don't just think or assume that because you're not hearing from someone that they're fine, that they're doing okay. It's important to arrange a forum. It can be online. And we've had to do that with our team just to check in every now and again to find out what's happening at home, how are you keeping up. Um, and people appreciate that. You will find that they have the same worries that you do and maybe can exchange strategies for dealing with, with those issues. Um, so it's really, really important to be able to check in. As a business operator or a manager or a leader, business leader, it's important to be flexible. It's a really um, trying time for everybody. And don't, you know, working from home does not mean working 24-7. So it's important to remind people about that. And if they don't feel as productive this week, so you didn't, people are saying when you're at home, use the time to do something productive. Everybody doesn't have to get a quarantine MBA. No, you don't have to start a garden. And if you, if you do start a garden, mine is fledgling, but um, you know, practice and restart again. But you also need to take time for yourself to relax. You don't have to be at peak performance all the time. And business leaders, it's important that you understand this and give people time to adjust and see how you can support them um, during this time. I, I could collect an offering. <laughs> the man just preach a whole word. Quarantine MBA, you do not need to get one. I love that. And you know what is, I, I found that I've been working much harder from home than in the office because you're not taking those breaks to get up from your desk, to drive to your house, to relax, to, you know. So thank you very much for that. You do not need a quarantine MBA. I'm going to tell my husband that <laughs> as soon as I'm done. Okay. Uh, Final words from each of our panelists, please. I'll start with Howard and I'll end with Minister Green and then I have a couple words myself. So thanks again to everyone um, that you know took the time out to be here with us this afternoon. Uh, it is really a pleasure to, of course, speaking to you, our SME clients. Uh, if it is that you need to have further dialogue with us, please reach out to us at sbj underscore sme at sagicor.com and i'll definitely respond and we'll be well we're always open to have that conversation with you our small business clients and we're ready and willing and waiting on you guys Dr. White. yes just to say thanks to the organizers sagicor and team um, for having me here and um, to be able to share with other business owners i am a business owner myself um, multiple and i've been through the challenges it's failure and it's trying and it's learning and it's building on that and it's preparing. So if you don't have a business plan, once you get that advice to get a proper plan, you go and get it. If you're aware of resources from the Development Bank of Jamaica, you get those vouchers once you qualify. Every two years, you can get a new voucher. Use them to improve your website, to um, train your staff, to get business training, etc. Um, so you know, check in with other people, find out, you may learn from them, um, resources that they're accessing, 
and you can also teach them something based on um, positive experiences that you've had. So Th thanks for having me. Thank you, Dr. White. I'm going to go to, uh, well, we can go to Mike, um, and then I will go to Ricardo and Ms. Val on Zoom for their, their final words as well. Well, um, I want to end just like what started, which is to say that it has been shown empirically that uh, entrepreneurs are special. You're so special that now when organization, large organization wants to become vet at what they do, there's not a word now being coined. They call it corporate entrepreneurism. And why we didn't call it corporate business is that entrepreneurs are supposed to be the ones who identify opportunities, um, are most fearless, and have the passion to continue to create and add value. And um, try not to lose that. The day that you lose that fire and that drive, Ms. Val calls it the passion, you're going to be in trouble. Um, I end by saying the country is depending on you, the world is depending on you to drive value. There's a new world that is coming. It has been sped up by COVID-19. We're talking about the, the fourth industrial revolution, which more or less make our world extremely digital. This has caused many of you who thought that you weren't able to maneuver the technology. It has forced many of us to become technology oriented. Um, at Sajikor, almost every meeting we have now um, is done via Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Um, there was in the past that all our meetings, we had to be physically present. So there has been change. Continue, don't get relaxed, don't relax anymore. Continue to do some of the things that you find efficient at this time. Take it into the new world because there is a new world that is coming and the country is depending on you to help us to take us into that new world and through it. But we believe in you because you're an entrepreneur. Thank you, Mike. And uh, I'll, I'll go to Ricardo. Absolutely. Uh, an absolute pleasure to have been here today sharing and also learning from fellow entrepreneurs. You know, one of the things I want to leave you with today is I want you to think of a melon, a big, beautiful melon. And when you're growing that melon, it is bombarded with all these vines and it looks not as beautiful, but if you were to pull those apart and take it off, rip it all off, that melon is still beautiful. Your business is beautiful. You are the thought leader in your business. You are the driver in your business. What I want us to focus on as entrepreneurs and what we've been doing and what I would love and encourage entrepreneurs to do is to remove the clutter. Look back at your operation Look back at your cash, be realistic, empower your employees. In order to empower your employees, they need training. In order to get training in social distancing, we need to start investing in remote training, which is one of the things one-on-one -on -one does right now. But I want you to focus on showing that beautiful melon to the world by removing the clutter and fixing your operation. And then and only then, you will be able to survive this horrific uh, pandemic. Godspeed with everyone who joined us today. Um, remember to reach out to a fellow entrepreneur, a friend, a family, if you need assistance in making that leap, in removing the clutter. Uh, reach out, get help. Don't think that you can show that by yourself. Get a board of directors if you don't have one. Get a board of advisors. Get a group of friends. Speak to someone. Speak to the bank. Speak to Sajikor. Get help and you will, you will make it through this horrific pandemic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ricardo. And Ms. Valerie? Well, what I want to remind my MSMEs is that it's not the size of the company anymore that's the key. It's the agility of the business to pivot. And I want them, I talk in, in pictures, so I want them to see the elephants trying to turn around to the new normal come like the ant and pivot right through the feet and move forward. 
and JVDC is right behind you, <laughs> giving you all the support you need to move forward. So pivot and move forward and become really agile in this new norm. Thank you, Valerie. One of these days we have, we can't do it now, but I'd love to know where you get your passion from. <laughs> I'd love to know. All right, Minister Green, your words. All right, um, a few things. Well, one, again, where I started, I really want to thank um, Sajikor. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so a few things. Um, one, I really want to thank Sajikor Bank. I think this is a, a great initiative. We're really looking forward to the business center, the small business center, you know, um, through JBDC and through the ministry, we've been developing these small business centers and we've been hoping that we would have a private sector company that would come on board that can really drive the sustainability of it. So we're really excited that Sajikor has come on board and we know this will be the first one. We know it will serve a lot of small businesses, but we expect it to, to really be expanded and to really touch a number of our businesses, not just in Kingston, but right across Jamaica. And you know, by now, since you've been watching, you realize I do these shameless plugs. So after we've gotten through the first one, I know a nice place called St. Elizabeth um, with a wonderful Sajikor branch in a place called Black River. And I think a small business center would be perfect. <laughs> so that is the first thing I want to say. The second thing, please reach out to us. Reach out to MyCAF, reach out to the JBDC, reach out to DBJ. We are here to help. The government is here to help. We want to drive your small business. Again, you can go into the JBDC. You can email us. We can do an assessment of some of the gaps. So now in this post-COVID time, you're wondering how to pivot. Don't be afraid to reach out to JBDC and say, listen, how can you help me pivot during this time? We really, really want to help. So reach out to the government. So that's the second thing. And again, the second shameless plug if you are looking for great Jamaican things to buy, go to thingsjamaicanshopping.com. It is the Things Jamaica store online. So we in government, we've pivoted through JBDC, through Things Jamaica. We have an online store that's helping over 600 small businesses, has the best locally made items. So that's the second thing. And the third thing I will draw from um, Johan. Feed your mind positivity. Yes, it has been a challenging time especially if you are extrovert and you really like social interaction, it has been very difficult for those of us who appreciate going out and just socializing and hugging, but feed your mind positive thoughts. If you're a business owner, think positivity because no matter how big the crisis, it just means the opportunity is bigger. You know, Alibaba was a small fledgling company when SARS, the first outbreak of SARS came, to China, right? Now Alibaba's revenue for 2019 is 56 billion United States dollars. 56 billion United States dollars. Zoom has seen a 169% increase in their profits. The reality is that there are opportunities. So Put your energy into searching for those opportunities for your company, for your business. Locally, since I give you far afield examples, locally, we have companies that have access export markets that they have never been able to access before. We have 10 new export markets in March and April as a direct result of COVID. We have a company that's been trying to get bleach into Cayman for years. And now, because of COVID, they were able to export their first shipment of bleach to Cayman. We exported tissue to the United States. Opportunities are there. CISO opportunities, we're here to help. Sajikor is here to help. We'll make it happen. Thank you so much. And I thank everyone who has been a part. First of all, thank you for joining us. Um, I don't want to call this a shameless plug, but it really is. You should, as SMEs, as business owners, try to get on board with our Sajikor payment gateway. Um, you can do. You can call us at 888-SAJIKOR, but you'll see a little bit more of that in mainstream media uh, very shortly. And that is the tool that allows you to accept credit 
credit card payments for your goods and services. And I know we hear it all the time. We're digitizing. We're going online. Our prime minister says it every time he's at a mic nowadays. So we need to get ourselves prepared. And um, if we're not prepared, that's when more anxiety will come. Right, Doc? We need to prepare a little bit more. So thank you so much once again. Thank you to the hardworking team that put this all together from marketing, from Sajakor Bank, uh, SME and retail units and to Phase 3 for being behind the scenes of our time here today. My name is Alicia White and it has been a pleasure.